The topic for today we're going to be diving into is going to be, because I just came off a trip, what are some strategies for staying on track while traveling, be that for weddings, be that for business trips. I'm going to tackle this one, um, so I guess we'll, we'll get into it. So today's topic is staying on track while taking trips, be that vacations, be that hikes, be that business trips in terms of conferences, here's going to be some of the strategies that I use to stay on track to keep fat loss going or to not, you know, go on a trip, enjoy yourself. And then you go on the scale when you, when you get back home, you're like, wow, I'm up 10 pounds. Didn't think it was that bad. I think we've all been there where you go on a trip. I know specifically my first time, actually, no, I've been there before, but Houston, Texas was with my family. And I remember we had some uh, good stuff. I think it was like Shipley's donuts we had some uh goulashes i think they're called as well in other places and i came back and i was like 10 pounds up after like a seven day trip it happens to the best of us so today we want to go over some strategies to make sure that that doesn't happen as frequently and we are in the driver's seat to not have surprises when we come back from these trips so this last weekend i was in a wedding in utah and it was kind of like you know we did stuff throughout the weekend but i came back and i'm actually leaner than i was when i left um, still had some ice cream cake, had some you know, wedding cake, had some great stuff, but I was able to come back and not be in a position where um, I had to relose the same five pounds in this fat loss phase. So really happy about that. And so some of the strategies I use, I mean, the first one overall, what is something that we can just focus on and just have downstream success? Because as we know, you need to be in a calorie surplus to gain body fat over time. So what we tend to see is... If we focus on, you know, protein things, if we hit our protein targets in a calorie efficient way, things downstream tend to figure themselves out. They tend to fall into place if you can nail protein in a calorie efficient way. So again, we got staying on track when traveling. We're going to include business. This is going to include conferences. It's going to be vacay. This is going to be weddings, all that fun stuff. So the first one we're going to say is hit your protein. And in terms of hitting your protein, I got some subcategories here. But if you get this right, satiety tends to be good. Things fall into place. So if you can nail your protein, get your protein in a good spot when you are traveling, you can be in a good spot. But what does not getting, you can still hit your protein. And if you're using inefficient sources that are high in calories, you can still find yourself in a, in a troublesome area. So when I was younger, I used to think that a protein is just any any source, any meat source or something, or anything that includes protein. So I'd be like, mom, um, uh, this sausage, it's a protein, right? And she's like, yeah, that's a protein. I'm like, okay, cool, it's healthy. It's gonna hit my protein, it's anabolic. Um, hey mom, this protein, uh, this, uh, this peanut butter, um, this is going to be, you know, there's, there's protein in this, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a protein. And none, no, the thing with foods is they are not a carb, a fat, a protein. It's kind of going to be a balance of all three. I mean, some foods like Gatorade is zero fat, zero carb. So it is pretty much just plain carbs. Egg whites, it is literally just pure protein, but generally foods are going to have some balance of everything, but be heavier in something versus another. So what we're looking for when we're getting protein, right? Is being calorie efficient. What does that not look like? Not using um, 70% lean beef to hit protein or peanut butter. Because if peanut butter, 200 calories, 6 grams of protein per serving, if I want to hit 180 grams of protein, what that's going to look like with protein powder uh, or peanut butter, that's going to be 30, yeah, 30 servings did 180 grams of protein. So 30 servings is 6,000 calories. So that's 30 times 200 cows, and that's 30 times 6G protein. If I wanted to get 180 grams of protein. So when we're traveling, when we hit our protein source, we want to be calorie efficient while we stay anabolic. So what does that look like? Or how would I do this when traveling? So good old, it's good to be alive in 2024. I'm not going to lie. We got Instacart. And it's just typically if I'm going to stay at a hotel room, actually when I'm with Airbnbs, be that with the HFP team, be that with on like a retreat, we almost always start the thing, the, the week off with like an Instacart order or we'll hit up the local whatever Costco, uh, Costco or like a Sam's. And the number one thing, the first thing we get is RTVs, RTVs. 
Um, love our titties. Um, so that's 30 grams of protein, and they're about 150 calories. So very calorie efficient. That means you're getting 120 calories from protein because cal- protein is four calories per gram within 150 calories. That is, you know, 80% efficient, 80% efficient or 80% protein by the calories, 120 calories out of 150 coming from protein. Very, very high, high and efficient. Um, Alan Morris, you're talking about 647 bread. I absolutely love it. High fiber bread. Um, and yeah, yeah, it's legit. You know, it's just, again, good to be alive. Uh, 2024, psyllium husk, all kinds of stuff. Um, Instagram, so back on the protein topic. Um, ready to drinks, and there's a ton of brands. These are just like the pre-made ready to drinks. It's just a ready to drink protein shake. It's a pre-made protein shake. It's already blended together. You just gotta, and you're done. You just drink it. Um, so pretty much it's like a protein powder, like without having to, to mix it. Um, and so these, you got many brands here. You got Fairlife, you got Equate, that's Walmart brand. You got Quest, you got Premier Protein. We'll just do PP for short. Um, and so you can do those. And I would just stock up the fridge there because I can have 60 grams of protein within 300 calories. That same 180 grams of protein that peanut butter would get me in 6,000 calories, I can use these to get me to in 900 calories. So this is being protein efficient. This is something I focus on doing. And kind of what I'm doing is uh, I try to bang out this protein, just trying to get it done on as low as calories I can so I can use other calories towards the fun stuff on traveling. So other ways that will help you hit your protein when you're on the go. So first thing, I just Instacart over like, you know, <laughs> like four of these per day. So if like I'm, I'm sore for four days, we'll get like 16 of them and just have them on hand. Boom, protein done. Um, these, I'm not going to say most people should, but protein bars, I think all in all protein bars are overrated because they are not that efficient per calorie. Even the best ones are usually like 200 cows and you get like 20 grams of protein. And so that's going to be, you know, 80 calories out of 200. So that's going to be, um, 40% calories from that, from protein. But generally, if you find a protein bar that's high in fiber, um, and it has a good amount of protein, and it's about 200 calories, they can be solid. And so easy meal would be like one RTD plus one PB. Not peanut butter, but protein bar. So we'll go Pro B. Pro B. Pro B. Um, And then that's going to be about, you know, 350 calories, and you hit 50 grams of protein, you get a good amount of fiber, that'll keep you satiated. So if I go to a conference, I bring a drawstring bag. Drawstring bag. Thankfully, in HFP, every retreat we do, we get a new drawstring bag. So I got like, I got way more than to do with. Um, but with these protein bars, with the Instacarts, uh, with the ready to drinks, what I'll do is if I'm going to a conference for like, let's say eight hours, maybe there's a lunch, maybe there isn't a lunch, I'll bring like two to four bars and I'll bring like four ready to drinks just so if I want a little snack while things are happening or like um, I'm going to have like a little mini meal, I'll just like knock one of these out. Doesn't mean that I have, to, I have to eat each one, but they'll keep good enough in a conference room or something for a good amount of time. If I'm going on a hike, let's say, I'll bring like one or two ready to drinks and probably a protein bar. Just have that as I'm going. Um, and now the third one is jerky, beef jerky. To all you lucky individuals that I'm super jealous of, that you have a Bucky's around you. So Buck E's. Where's a Buck? ease i forgot but it's one of the two but their turkey jerky is absolutely phenomenal especially if they have like the bar where it's not like pre-packaged they like you know take it out for you um i would just load up on like that turkey jerky and i may never have like another rtd i'll just eat that all day but you know your boys in new jersey um so we don't have bucky's yet if somebody's gonna franchise a bucky's in new jersey please put it in central jersey and we'll be best friends um but beef jerky in general um you can often find like, I think there's some low sugar options now. And like, I'm not someone who's like, oh, sugar bad, et cetera. But like, typically if it's relatively, if it's lower in sugar, it's going to be lower in carbs. It's going to be lower in calories per gram of protein. And that's kind of what I'm thinking. I'm not like sugar bad. I'm like, okay, less calories probably going to put you in a good spot. So lower sugar options, um, lower sugar options, higher protein. And so this is going to be good to bring into, again, a conference. It's kind of smelly. So you may not want to do that like a business conference. But beef jerky can be decent. 
I will say caveat with beef jerky is it's not typically as satiating as most protein sources because it's dehydrated and hydration or water content in foods usually enhances the volume at zero calories. So fruits and vegetables tend to be so satiating just because they got a lot of water content, but like compare grapes versus raisins. How much more satiating is like, um, let's say a hundred calories of grapes or let's say 200 calories of grapes. Um, versus like 200 calories of raisins because it's dehydrated. It's going to be far less volume. You can probably just handful, boom, 200 calories. Grapes, you got to sit down. You got to like, you know, do all the stuff um, and that'll keep you busy. So because beef jerky is dehydrated, that's going to be, you know, something that's going to be a little bit more challenging. Um, difference between 70% beef versus 90% lean beef. Great question, um, Brian. So let me put that in here. I'm going to do a subcategory on here. So 70% lean beef versus 96. Um, I wish I knew the numbers, but it's pretty much the percentage is grams of fat per um, weight of food, I believe. So I know in the case of, actually, yeah, the math does work. Um, because for 96% lean, you get like 4.5 fat per 25 G protein. So that means for 140 calories from you know, uh, the beef, you're going to get 25 grams of protein. So it's pretty darn efficient in calories. Um, and so that's the 96 link. So it's called 96, four typically, because the four is 4% of the weight of the food is going to be in the fat. Um, so compare that with 70%. What that's going to look like is going to be, and I'm going to do rough math here, but that would be, you know, four ounces of serving that is 112 grams. Yeah, 112 grams. So I'm just going to do simple math here. It's going to be 32 grams of fat. <laughs> oh, gosh. So 32 grams of fat and per, and I doubt you're going to get as much protein just because I know you're playing with that weight. So now the leanness is going to be, um, you know, 30%. So you're probably going to get like only 20 grams of protein here. Um, so you're going to get all these calories from fat, which are nine calories per, of, per gram um, for the same amount of protein. So this is why like when people say like, oh, red meat bad, I can't say all red meat bad, but typically when people eat red meat, it's going to be ribeye steak, which is going to have a lot of fat per gram of protein. So it's going to be higher in calories overall. You're going to be having more fat. Not that fat is bad, but it just contains calories. Um, versus if you replace all those ribeye steaks with lean sirloin or filet, you're going to get you know a lot less fat and a lot more protein um, right there. So that's going to put you in a better spot to maintain a calorie deficit, not have super high calories while you're getting your protein hit. So that's kind of the difference between 70% lean ground beef versus 96%. And then if you go, you know, Guy Fieri, you know, in terms of flavor town, go into flavor town, probably something with more fat is going to taste a little bit better, maybe a little bit more, um, you know, uh, what is that called? Tender, I guess, feeling because it's because fat is butter. So like, you know, it's going to be more buttery. Um, that's kind of that trade-off because forever you get you, there's a gotcha, but generally for me, I'm usually going for 96% because I'm like, let's throw some salt on it. I can make it taste good. Wow. Very eye-opening. Thank you. Yeah. Great question, Brian. Um, so now moving on to, this is pretty much tackling protein when traveling. These are kind of the things I'm thinking of. Um, and then this one's useful. Bring protein powder. This one I love, especially if you're, actually I do this if I'm in hotels or Airbnbs, bring protein powder. Preferably chocolate, preferably frosted chocolate cupcake from PE Science, and use my discount code, which is going to be Hainesty to save you some money. But no, in all seriousness, well, yes, use my code. But in all seriousness, I would do like, you know, protein powder. Because you could do chocolate, you could do vanilla. But what you can do is make a protein mocha. Protein mocha. So what you're going to do here is you just put a little bit. Little coffee, and then do like 0.5 scoops. You know, like a 0.5 scoop. You could do you know one full scoop of protein, um, and then you're gonna do a little coffee. You're gonna mix it up. And it's gonna get pudding like. Then you add a little coffee and you keep mixing it, and then it's gonna be a little bit lighter pudding. And then you keep mixing it, and then you add a little bit more coffee, and then you're gonna be able to dilute it. The reason why, if you just add like a ton of coffee to a scoop of protein, you're gonna get clumps and stuff. But this is the strategy: you do a little bit of coffee. Um, with like your, your scoop or so you mix it up, you get a pudding a little bit more then you get a dilute pudding a little bit more, 
then you start getting like a liquid and then you can start diluting. So that's how you don't get clumpy uh, protein mocha. So you so spend a lot of time on focusing on protein when traveling. But the, my point here is if you're getting enough protein in, you're probably going to be highly satiated per calorie, which is probably going to have you be less hungry you know, later on and you're less likely to overconsume and maybe more calorie dense foods. So it often sets you up for success. And we've seen that in, in my you know, coaching program in the Healthy Flex Prescription that a lot of our clients, if they're getting the protein right, they're ranking their hunger very low as they lose weight. And they're like, wow, this is way easier than I thought. But because they were just counting calories, they weren't focusing on their protein. They weren't keeping their fat relatively low. They weren't filling up their carbs with watermelon, berries, um, and vegetables, and kind of made dieting suck a lot more when it didn't have to. So now moving on, moving in <laughs> to the next piece is two, not three. I like to call this rule two, not three. So when traveling, you usually have access to unique food, foods you don't have available to you when you're at home, and it's a good time. Um, and so here's something, let's say if you have a big meal, you know, your big meals where you're enjoying yourself, let's say they're a thousand calories. If you have only, if you have three of them, then you're gonna have 3000 calories. Uh, math. So, and most people are not maintaining at 3000 calories unless like you're a bodybuilder, you're tall and you just have like 10 plus years of, um, training. So most people are going to gain weight at 3,000 calories. However, if you limit these big meals to maybe two per day, you're less likely at like 2K, probably maybe like 2,200 to 2,400 cows, you're less likely to gain weight there. So it's limiting these big kind of indulgent meals. And this is just a good way of like, you know, keeping things in balance. So I say, don't ball out at breakfast. And I guess like, cause if you're in a hotel, you're in Airbnb, like what, are you going to ball out on oatmeal? Have you never had oatmeal in your life? You can't get oatmeal. You can't get some, um, some Quaker oats in your pantry and like just microwave it. Like, no, you, you don't need 500 calories of oatmeal to start your day when you're in like, uh, Puerto Rico, like dog, just have a protein mocha, hit 50 grams of protein and 240 calories and like, keep it moving. Make that a light meal. Um, so don't ball out breakfast on like you know, oatmeal, cereal, and then if you're even at like, you know, a buffet or something like really, can you get eggs anywhere else and bacon and all these things? That's where I typically say don't ball out on breakfast. And then in terms of that, instead, this is what works for me. And I, I just think it's more worth it on an ROI return on investment of your calories. Instead, keep it light, get like fruits, fruits and protein mocha, and then like call it a day. Um, and you can get a ton of volume. I'm not saying like you have to fast, but like, hey, keep it within bounds. And then you can enjoy those later meals. Enjoy the later meals. And maybe that's going to be, you know, it could even be this. You can do light breakfast, you know, light BF. You can do light lunch even. And then you're like, all right, I'm a ball out. You know, at dinner, I'm going to have, you know, a thousand cows. I'm going to have maybe a burger that's a little bit more indulgent. And then probably still do like steamed veggies on the side. Still keep it within bounds. But then my dessert, give me that, give me that lava cake. I know that's like a thousand calories, but like overall, you know, maybe I'm at 2,500 calories, but if I balled out on oatmeal on meal one, then I'm going to be at like 3000 calories or 3,500 calories. And that's probably going to put me more in a sticky situation. So I like to think of the two, not three rule rule. And that really helps me when I'm traveling because I keep my breakfast pretty light lunch. I often do keep kind of modest, moderately light. Maybe it's gonna be a salad with protein. And then typically, like my my dinner, maybe like a thousand calories, and I'll just save calories for that. And and I won't typically say no to like some froyo or something. So there's ways to work the strategy. If you're deep deep into dieting, it may be one not three, which is kind of just like the game that I play. Um, you know, dinner maybe a thousand calories, lunch is five hundred, breakfast is like three hundred, um, and then maybe there's room for you know a frozen yogurt for you know four hundred calories or something. But keeping things kind of within balance. Number three. Get those steps. So when traveling, you know, you're in a new location, be that vacation, be that um, conferences, et cetera, like take walks, explore the area that you, you're not going to be at often. I feel like if you're, because you're most likely if you're traveling, there's going to be cool stuff to eat. There's going to be stuff. You're probably just like going to be out of your element, out of your routine. Uh, and you're probably going to have a little bit more calories. And like, that is a okay it's like, it just adds to the timeline of your fat loss phase. If you're losing fat, if you're bulking, hey, now, now we're going to just get a little bit more calories in. Um, and so I would say, 
it's useful to make to kind of mitigate or accommodate those calories. Just be a little bit more active. Get those steps in. Explore. And I feel like it's really easy to hit. Like, let me ask you this. Is it easier to get 10,000 steps in per day when you're traveling at like Puerto Rico or Miami or Utah um, or, you know, in your backyard, on your street, getting those steps in? Um, it's probably more exciting to go walk around Miami or Puerto Rico or a hike in Utah, et cetera. So get a walk around, maybe go walk and get, you know, a coffee even. And those little steps add up. But explore that cute town that you're only going to spend three days in at your Airbnb. Um, number four. Uh, I mean, this one is what I always do. Find local gyms um, to get your training in. You got more food in, fuel some awesome training. You know, get your protein in, get some awesome training done. Find some sick local. I mean, I would even say for me, but like not everyone's me. And I understand I'm someone who probably gets more value out of training, exploring and seeing new gyms um, because I, I like this stuff. I may not love training when I'm doing it, but I feel great afterwards and I like the returns of it. But find local gyms, cool ones. There's cool ones to check out. You can almost always get like a $20 day pass or something. Or like, you know, Planet Fitness. You can always get the black card. And I think that gives you like unlimited access, you know, where wherever you are. And so um, that's going to be kind of the game to play. Uh, black card you can, and Planet Fitnesses are everywhere. And even so, here's a little cheat code. You want to get two workouts for like 20 bucks. For 20 bucks, their day pass that is free. Actually, yeah, this is free. 24 hours of gym access. If you just give them your email and they say, I've been told um, if you if you train at 9 a.m. today and then you come back at like 8:59 a.m. and use that same pass, they'll let you in. So you can get two workouts actually for free, free 99. But then once you do that, it's then 20 bucks a time. And I just do that instead because um, a bit of too many. But Planet Fitness is they're pretty much everywhere. And they got plenty of dumbbells, so you can have a good time there. Number five. <laughs> Number five. This was actually a bigger one. Um, and that's going to be in terms of like dinners. I'm going to talk a little bit about dinners. So like meals out. So meals out. And then this is also a little different vk versus biz or just like kind of how i conceptualize it this is how i stay you know successful when i'm out you know trying to get in some good calories but stay on my on my goals hit them of course um the other piece is going to be um if a work trip i tend to gravitate to chain restaurants chains i mean because usually i just like want something that's repeatable um I may try out something local on like a work trip, but like often if there's a Popeyes, I would love to get the, the black and tenders. Their, their macros are amazing. And like, if there's one thing you take out of these. Uh, if your Popeyes is willing to spend 15 minutes cooking you chicken, black and tenders, amazing macros. That was my birthday dinner this year. Uh, I just love them so much. And because the calories are good and the protein's high and the calories are low, I get to eat like 16 tenders. It's awesome. So I'll tend to go to change, but also I was in Austin the other week. So Austin, uh, and I was trying out the local franchises, the local chains. So that was like sweet green, things that I don't have access to in like Jersey. Kava, but Austin is also a very like health intensive place. So sweet green, Kava, Hop Dottie, their, uh, their tuna burger. I love Torchy's tacos, which are only like 200, 300 calories a taco. So yeah, they're chains and franchises and like, oh, what are you doing, Kevin? But like, hey, now I like my authentic Torchy's tacos. Um <laughs> But I'll go there and I know that the calorie information, but they're, they're pretty solid, man. One, two, three, four, five. But often if it's more vac vacation, I mean, I would still, if I was taking a, like a vacation in Austin, I'm still getting some kava, hot dotty. Maybe those are going to be like my lighter meals that I want like you know 600 or less calories. But, you know, I'm going to try, you know, the local foods, find hole in the walls, hole in the walls. Um, but also I'd use the two, not three strategy, but also sometimes it's, be smart. So I have to say this, and uh, I've worked with a number of people that have been dieting, saying they're doing everything right. And then, you know, we're down five pounds and then, you know, vacation happens and we're up 10 pounds. We're like, okay, what happened? And they're like, I don't know. It's just hard for me to stay on track. It's like, all right. So like, what did you order for dinner? And then it's like, okay, you know, I had a burger this one dinner. It's like, okay. Like a burger is fine. Like maybe pair that up with like something lighter, maybe a side salad or, or baked potatoes, even like not too bad. And then they're like, oh, no, I had like 
I had the nacho fries on the side. Like, okay, well then I hope that you just like, you know, you had a Diet Coke or a water on the side and kind of mitigated that. Like, no, no, I had a, a margarita, actually three of them. Um, and they were like, all right, well, like uh, maybe those are like 300 each. And uh, this is kind of adding up to like 3000 calories so far. But like, I'm sure like that was it for the day and everything else was lighter. Like, no, 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 no. Had the lava cake and we went out for dessert after. I'm like, okay. So like if fat loss is our goal and it's a priority right now, which we're saying it is, sometimes <laughs> I don't know what it feels called out. Actually, I do hope some people feel called out because awareness is the first step. But <laughs> in the case of like, I usually will ask myself or I'll, I'll have a friend if they say like, hey, I'm struggling to lose weight. And like we're out to dinner or like maybe it's my dad. Maybe it's like my sisters. And I'm like, Kevin, I, I just don't know how to lose weight. And I'm like, all right, cool. Like, but we go out for dinner and there's like, say it's Cheesecake Factory. There's all these skinny licious stuff, skinny licious menu at Cheesecake Factory. There's like all the stuff that's a ton of protein and less than 600 calories. So the options are there. And I've been told this is a priority for me to lose fat. And then what happens is, you know, Kevin, this is a priority, like, but I just don't know what's going on. And then I'm sitting next to you and it's like, all right, let me start out with the nacho fries and then I'll get the potato skins and then I'm going to get the double cheeseburger, extra cheese and bacon. And then, and then, and then, and then, and then, and then of course we finish up with cheesecake, it's cheesecake factory. And then I'm like, do we really think this is a priority? Are we being really real and saying like, this is the most important thing for you right now that I want to lose fat and I'll do whatever it takes because whatever it takes, what I think of is like, I'm going to, I'm going to weigh everything to the gram. I'm down to like, I, whatever it takes, I think is a high bar to say that you're committing to. Um, and so this is just me being really real, but like, sometimes we got to ask, just be smart. Like sometimes just ask yourself or I'll ask myself, like, is this the choice that makes sense to get me to where I'm saying and mentally committing to as a priority? Um, and Nicole will challenge me when I'm bulking and I want to like get my body fat up and really like gain size. Sometimes I'm doing things of like, okay, is my third salad of the day and like overestimating these calories, is this really what's going to be best for getting me to X goal? And on the flip side, like Kevin is, you know, starting off your day with a triple omelet with extra cheese, really setting you up for success for the rest of the day to be in control with your calories. Probably not. So sometimes it's just be smart and, and kind of have the gives and takes that comes along with these things. Uh, I put it in here, value. I want to use this one because this just, it, you may see it on an Instagram caption, but prepping for this really like brought this into things. Value. So typically when we think value, let me just minimize these. When we think value, Value equals, it's typically quantity quantity or quality per dollar, right? When we think value, I want to challenge you in terms of thinking value in terms of, let's go in terms of like nutrition, in terms of um, fat loss targets. So what I'm thinking of, and, I, and this is kind of underlying, like it, I never put words to it, but it's always a game that I'm playing. But when we think value in terms of fat loss goals, I'm thinking of palatability, so taste, could say that's quality, and volume per calorie. So when I think value, is a burger a good value decision? No, it's a Lamborghini. So is the, is the disco fries uh, a good value decision for my fat loss goals? You know, that could be, and that's different for other people. Some people find other foods more palatable than others, and that's the individual uh, kind of part of this. Um but generally, it's a high cost of calories. So like no matter how delicious it is, the value may not be there because there's just so many calories. Cheesecake at Cheesecake Factory, phenomenal. It's delicious. But for 1,500 calories a slice, you can't say that's value. That's a Lamborghini. That is uh, – that's a Bugatti. I don't know if we're going to all ball out on a Bugatti all the time. Um, so keeping that in mind, you know, what is what is kind of high value to me? What is that – that Honda, Honda Civic, you know, that thing will keep going. That's getting you 200,000 miles. For me at Cheesecake Factory, that's the skinny, luscious Mexican tortilla salad. It's like 600 calories, ton of volume. It's pretty darn tasty, but the calories are low. So that just makes everything, you know, way better because you're reducing that denominator, which like that amplifies it. So I'm thinking of value. So takeaway is think of value in terms of fat loss goals. What is that value? That palatability, the volume you get per calorie. And if you think about that, that can be useful. So 
this is going to be, I'm going to close this one out, this topic, but I just, uh, I think it's so important. And I'm someone like in this season of my life, I've traveled more than I ever thought I would. So I've really had to get, you know, efficient and effective with um, staying on track while, while dieting. Because if every single trip that I take, if you're someone who travels a lot, if every single trip you take knocks you off your goals, knocks you off your plan, and you travel 20, you know, 20 weekends a year, you're going to have a tough time getting any momentum or any kind of leeway or anywhere in terms of changing your physique or body or hitting your goals. But if you find something that makes it fit, that you can do no matter where you are, keep the principles in mind and manage them, you're a freaking machine. And you're going to accomplish your goals and be that in, if you're in Italy, if you're in Utah, if you're in the PNW, wherever you may be, if you are that cool, solid cucumber that's going to get the job done and stay on the priorities, you're going to be, you're a force to be reckoned with. So staying on track when traveling, get your protein in, in a calorie efficient way. Things fall into place. Number two is use the two, not three strategy. This works for me. You know, keep those hot, those big calorie dense meals to two, uh, not three, three, get those steps in, explore, get those in while you're in a new environment. Four, find some cool local gyms or get a Planet Fitness black card and then you unlock, I forgot, it was $20 a month or something, but you get all the gyms and they're everywhere. And then five is when handling dinners or meals out, um, <laughs> I guess at the end of the day, be smart or um, focus on quote unquote value. Um, so that's going to take it for today's topic. Hope that one's useful for you guys.